Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and this is season two. This is LXL IGCSE, and this is number 24, bearings. Right, let's get into it. The bearing of Paris from London is 149. Work out the bearing of London from Paris. Right, well, straight away, I could be able to work that out just by adding 180 degrees. And that will give me 329. So that is the answer. But obviously, I'm going to explain it a little bit better than that. <laughs> So if you have a bearing um, and it says, always look at where it says from, because that's where you need to start. So it says here from London. So what I'll do is I'll just draw a little dot and I'll draw a north line up and I'll put L there for London. And then if I want to work out the bearing um, of 149 degrees, I'll then need to measure around 149 degrees clockwise from the north line. So that's 90 degrees. I keep going, and it's going to be somewhere about there. It won't be all the way, it won't be half the way around because that'd be 180 degrees. Okay, so I can draw my line down, and then somewhere it will hit Paris here. So that means that angle here is 149. And if I draw a north line up from Paris, then the angle that I would need on the bearing from Paris this time means that I would start at Paris and I would go around clockwise again until I hit this line right there to take me back up to London. Okay, well, how could I work out then what that purple angle is? Well, this green angle in here must add with 149 to make 180 because these two lines are parallel, which means the angles inside are co-interior which means they must add to make 180 degrees. So I can do this, it's equal to 180, which means that X, that green angle there, is equal to 31. And then how do I find the purple angle? Well, purple and green make a full circle, so I take it away from 360, and I'm left with 329. But how did I know right off the bat that it was going to be just add 180? Well, that's because a back bearing, which means that you go back from where you came, will always differ by 180 degrees. Which, if you think about it, makes sense, because in order for you to come back from where you've been, you need to turn around, and turning around is going through 180 degrees. So you either add on 180 or you subtract 180, depending on what your number is. This one is below 180, so you add 180. Right, I hope that was helpful because uh, that was the longest I've ever spent explaining a two mark question. Okay, here we go. What, work out the bearing of the village W from uh, village R. Okay, so that means I'm starting, again, it's always where you're starting from. That's where you start. And that means I'm at R right here, and then I go all the way around until I hit the line that W is on, which is right there. So it's that angle that I need to turn through which is obviously 125 plus 84, um, which is equal to 209. Okay, work out the bearing of R from T. Okay, well that means what I'll need to do is draw a north line at T, because once again, it's always where we're coming from is where we start. So I draw a north line at T, and then I go around, always from clockwise, always go clockwise around, sorry, until I get to the line which has R on, which is that line there. So it's that angle that I'm looking for. Well, I can't figure that one out directly. I need to find first the green angle inside here. Um, well, we know that that's co-interior with 125 because both of these two lines here are north lines. So the angles in between them here add to 180. So I just do uh, 180 minus 125, which is equal to 55. And then to find the purple angle, which is the one I'm looking for, I do 360 minus 55, which is 305. Bosh. Okay, we've got a scale diagram here. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit just so I can see it a bit better. 
Um, the scale diagram shows the position on the map of a house A. Okay, well, I don't need to know that anymore, so let's scroll down. We've got a scale, and the house C is on a bearing of 110 degrees from A. Um, okay. Right, so these questions rarely ever come up in the higher tier, but they could do. Um, and it says here, a bearing of 110 degrees. So again, from A means I start A, and I go around, that will be 90 degrees, and I'll come down here, and somewhere around there will be 110. Of course, in the exam, I would measure that angle, and I'd put my protractor on there, and I'd measure exactly an angle of 110. I'd put a dot somewhere there, um, using my protractor, and then I'll just draw a straight line through that dot, so that uh, that angle is 110. Uh, and then what I would do is I would need to make sure that I measured the correct distance from A to C, 700 meters. Well, what I'll need to do is divide that by the scale, and that gives me 3.5. So that's 3.5 centimeters this distance here needs to be. So I would measure it 3.5 centimeters uh, using my ruler, uh, and let's say, for example, that is 3.5 centimeters, and then we're, we're job done, which means I can put here. If that distance was 3.5, that would be perfect, and that would be C. Okay, um, it says write the scale of the map in the form... Oh, no. Write the scale of the map in the form 1 to N. Oh, right, that confused me a little bit. Um, it, I've, it's not 1 to 20 because the, the units are different. So we need to make sure the units are the same before we can write it uh, in just a ratio format. So at the moment we have uh, one uh, centimeter to 200 meters. So we need to convert them into the same unit. So let's convert the 200 uh, meters into 200 centimeters. And we need to times that by 100 because there are 100 centimeters in a meter. So we get one centimeter to 20,000 centimeters, which means that the scale is 1 to 20,000. Okay, perfect. Okay, right, these next questions are kind of higher tier questions only uh, because they use bearings uh, along with some complex trigonometry. Um, ship B is, to due, is due north of ship A, yep. Okay, you can see that on the diagram. Um, I think we've got all the information on the diagram actually. And it says find the bearing of ship C from ship B. Okay, so ship B, again it says from, so that's where we're going to start. Uh, so I'm going to put my pen at B and I'm going to draw a angle from north down to the line which contains ship C. So this is the angle which I need to find, so I'm going to call it X. Um, but that angle's not inside the triangle, uh, and I know that I'm going to have to use some of the angles inside the triangle. So in fact, the angle on a straight line right there, um, Y, would be more helpful to find. Well, we're going to have to find Y, and then that will tell us what X is. Okay. Um, so I'm going to use, well, in this situation right now, I've got two sides that flank an angle. Uh, and that means I need to use the cosine rule. Because if I call this side little a, and this angle here capital A, and then the other two could be B and C, um, then we can use the cosine rule. It doesn't really matter which ones are B and C. Um, in fact, it will probably be better to label this one little b because it's opposite the angle at big B and this one little c, but again, it literally doesn't matter. Okay, a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine capital A. That's the cosine rule. So a squared is going to equal 275 squared plus 150 squared minus 2 lots of 275 times 150 times cosine of the angle, which is 120. Right, perfect. I'm not sure why I put brackets there, but that's fine. Don't, don't really need them. Let's just make sure that's a time sign. Okay, I'll put that in my calculator and come back. 
Okay, I put that in and that gave me a squared is equal to 139375. So of course what I'm gonna do next is square root. Uh, and let's get the exact, well not the exact value, let's get the decimal value, 373.3. Okay, great, so that's 373.3. And now what we have is we have a pair. And by pair, I mean a side and an angle that is opposite it. So I have a side and an angle which is opposite it, which means that I can then work out a missing side or angle as long as it has a side or angle opposite that, which means we can use the sine rule, basically. <clears throat> so I'm going to say that sine y over its corresponding side uh, which is uh, 250 is opposite side because the angle points at 275 is equal to sine of 120 over the side which it faces uh, which is this okay let's solve this um, so I'm going to multiply through by 275 like so, and we'll put that into our calculator. Okay, great, we get sine y is equal to 0 0.638. Uh, so then we just need to do sine to the minus one to find the y value. And we get 39.6. Go up to the top. We know if this is 39.6, then the bearing we're looking for was x, so that's 180 minus the answer. So it's 140 to the nearest degree, and that is our final answer. Beautiful. Okay, next question is even trickier because they don't actually give us a, a diagram, we've got to draw it ourselves. So again, we always start with what it's from. It's from A, so I'm gonna draw A just in the middle somewhere. like so, and the bearing is 105, so that straight out to the right is 90 degrees, because you have to turn through 90 degrees, so 105 is somewhere down like that. Um, and we also know the distance, um, oh, we don't know the distance, do we? No, we don't, okay. But that takes us to B. And that angle in there is 105. Okay, now we're saying that C um, from B is 230. So that's zero, that's 90, that's 180, that's 270. So 230 somewhere about like there. Let's call it, yeah, let's call it about there because I can see that B to C is 95 and C to A is bigger. So it's going to be about like that. Um, okay, so that angle around there is 230. And like we said, um, this side length is 95 because it says it here. And then C to A to connect it up. Whoops. Oh. C to A like that is. Um, that distance is 180. Okay, um, calculate the distance um, uh, B to C. So we need to find this X, this distance, sorry, A, B to A is the distance we need. So X is right there. Okay, so the first one we know is co-interior angles. So 105 and 75 add to make 180 because these are both north lines, they're both parallel. So these two angles inside add to 180. That then tells us what this angle is because we have a circle there or um, angles around a point. So we can take away 230 and take away 75 and that gives us 55. Okay, great. Right, we've got this triangle now and in fact we've got two options of how to solve this. We could either use the cosine rule, 
um, because we have A and we have angle A and we've got B and C flanking it. But that will give us a quadratic if we do it. I'm going to prefer to use the sine rule twice instead. So in terms of the sine rule, we have a angle and a side uh, which are opposite. But unfortunately, we can't work out x directly because we don't know the green angle. But what we can do is we can work out the, um, the blue angle in here because we know the blue side opposite. And if we work out the blue angle, then it means we can work out the green angle, which means we can then work out the green side. Okay, well, I hope that was clear. So I'm going to find sine of capital A, which is this blue angle here, over its opposite side, 95, is equal to the pair that we have, so sine 55 over 180. So sine capital A is equal to 95 times by sine 55 over 180. Okay, so 95 times by sine 55 over 180. Okay, that gives us 0 0.43. And then of course, to work out A, we just do sine to the minus one. And we get 25.6, which looks about right. See, it looks like a very acute angle. Great. Okay, so now we can find the green angle. So the green angle at C is obviously 180 minus uh, 55 minus 25.6, because angles in a triangle add to 180. So I do 180 minus that previous answer and also minus 55. And that gives us 99. Four. And now I can do the sine rule to work out the side length x. So to work out the side lengths, I put the sides on top and I put sine of the angles on bottom. It just makes it easier to work out when you're rearranging. Uh, but it's the same formula. Okay, so we have x over the angle which is opposite it, which is 99.4, or sine of 99.4, should I say. And the pair which we do know for certain actually we know the green at we know the blue and the yellow pair but I'm just going to use the yellow one as well um, so that would be 180 over sine of 55 okay so by doing it like this all we need to do is just multiply through by that denominator which is sine of 99.4 so that's what's going to go in our calculator and that will be that um, so I will do a sine of that angle, which is still in my calculator. Always try and keep values in your calculator and just press the answer button to so you don't lose accuracy. Uh, do da Okay, so this gives us a value of x is equal to 216.8, uh, and it says the nearest, or well, for three significant figures, so 217 uh, is our final answer. Bosh.